afternoon, welcome, and thank you for joining us today as we bring this virtual meeting, virtual town hall meeting, which is, by the way, the first ever in Rio Grande City's history, and of course, the circumstances that bring us to this point, and going back to what they say about necessity being the mother of invention, well, here we are. And we will be talking today. I have special guests, Judge Vera and Dr. Vasquez, and they'll introduce themselves shortly. And what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the latest developments of COVID-19. We're going to talk about city and county business. And we're also going to touch up on the uh, strategic business and economic recovery, recovery efforts they're underway um, because the reality is once this is over and it will, it will, we are working diligently to be planning for the recovery efforts because one day we will be free of this COVID-19 or have the treatment available and uh, we will have this recovery. So first and foremost, I want to thank the public for taking the, the effort, the make, for making the effort to comply with all these city orders, the county orders, the recommendations from our health authorities, and for making it easier on us, the community leaders, and uh, as residents, as, as uh, family members, as brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers and uh, grandchildren and grandparents, all of us, in this fight against COVID-19. And as we have mentioned before, the reality is we have never been in this plight in our generation. And uh, now we are here and we must continue to work together to address the needs of our community while at the same time keeping everybody safe and healthy and stopping or minimizing the spread or slowing down the spread of COVID-19. So, with that being said, um, with us today are our Star County Judge Eloy Vera. Judge Vera, would you go ahead and, and uh, welcome everyone? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, Mayor, thank you so much for for holding this uh, meeting and and for having us uh, to be part of it. Uh, I also want to welcome all all those people that are listening in and that will listen in. I guess as as we proceed, uh, I, you know, there's so much to to talk about and and so much going on, and I'm sure we'll uh, we'll touch on those subjects as we go. But I do want to thank everyone that's to, taking the time to to join us and hopefully spread uh, some of the information that that we that we will be giving you all. Uh, so that our community can be well informed. Again, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you, Judge Vera. And with us today is uh, Dr. Jose Vasquez. He's our county health authority, and has, he's been instrumental in addressing the health needs of our community in the fight of this COVID-19 pandemic. So. It gives me great pleasure to be here with uh, Dr. Vasquez uh, and the entire um, residents and community members and large Dr. Vasquez. It is an honor. Thank you very much, Mayor. It's an honor to be with you here, George, and Mayor Villarreal, as well as with all the citizens for Star County. I am going to take the opportunity that we have this forum to present the latest uh, knowledge and the latest information on the infection of the COVID-19 throughout the country, as well as in our community. The latest uh, numbers that we do have uh, from the United States uh, Center of Disease Control are alarming. We have around, right now, 423,000 cases in the U.S. with a number of deaths above 14,600. Yesterday alone, we have close to 1,700 dead people in our country. Even though these numbers seem to be staggering and alarming, we can forget that the predictions that we have from the beginning of this pandemic 
where the, we were going to have affected a very vast majority of the population. The first estimates we have, it was about 50 to 70 percent of all the United States were at some point going to be affected for the COVID-19 infection. That means grossly about 270 million people in this country infected with the COVID-19. And if we were to consider a mortality rate of just 0 0.5, we're talking about more than 12 million people dying in this country. Thanks God, these numbers do not seem to be following the current path and not the current curve. I believe that the work that federal as well as state and local authority has imposed in each community have paid off and the number of cases are by far less than what we initially thought that they were going to be. However, this does not mean that we are not facing the challenge of a lifetime. This is a situation that we have never faced before and we will hopefully never will in the future. The numbers in the way that they are growing so far had been more than what states like New York, Detroit, Seattle have been able to manage in their healthcare system. That's the purpose of what is being said so many times about flattening the curve. Flattening the curve just means to decrease the number of cases that are at any given time with the purpose of spreading them throughout time and giving a chance to the health, health, health the healthcare system of each community to be able to manage the mounting number of cases. In the valley, the situation is dispersed. We have counties like ours where we are happy to announce that all of the mitigation efforts and all of the planning that we have conducted since very early on in this process are paying off results. With a number of seven cases out of 278 total cases that we have done in Star County is giving us less than a 2% positive case rate. The national average, it was around 10%. So that means that every 100 people that is tested for COVID-19 throughout the country, about 10% of those cases were positive. In our case, we are less than 2%, okay? So that's, those are numbers that are a reason to feel, to rejoice, a, a, a reason to feel proud because it shows that the work that the community has put throughout these two or three weeks has been paid off. However, it doesn't mean that we have to bring down our guard. We need to, more than ever, keep going in the efforts because this is not a problem that is going to end tomorrow, nor is going to end by the end of May, like some people have proposed. This is something that has come to stake. And the final resolution of this pandemic is going to come either the day we have a good working vaccine or we have proper treatment to control this disease. The first is a year or a year and a half away. The latter, we don't know. There are several studies being conducted with trial on about 25 different types of medications or cocktails of medications and with mixed results. Some of them have shown promising uh, results, some of them have failed in the process. We, the medical community and the scientific community, keep researching on a daily basis all around the world to find the proper treatment, the proper cure, and the proper vaccine. Talking about our local level, okay, we have a total number of people tested in our facility at the STC campus site of 475 people since the beginning of this process. Of those, there are 18 positive cases. There are 410 negative cases and a total number of pending of 47. Of the 18 positive cases, 12 were Hidalgo County, one is Webb County, and five are Star County. We need to remember that Star County has two more cases 
that were tested at private facilities. That brings the total number for Star County to seven. And that has been the case for the last three days. The last positive case we have here, it was on Sunday, and it was somebody that came down from Louisiana. A pipeline worker that was in Louisiana came down to town already with symptoms and with a strong suspicions of being positive for COVID-19 because he did have co-workers who had tested positive. He was seen at one of our local medical facilities and put in quarantine immediately. The family also was evaluated and no symptoms were found on them. This person is being in quarantine and doing well. That was the last case reported. Since then, Monday, Tuesday, and whatever is going on Wednesday, we do not have any new cases. There is questions from the whole community about the negatives, okay? And the negatives have been an issue because the testing facility and the pharmaceutical or the lab company behind the testing facility are not able to keep up with all of the information they are gathering on a daily basis. They are covering multiple testing sites throughout the state. So when there is a positive case, they do report that case immediately to the health authority of that county, to the Texas Department of Health, Region 11, as well as to the primary care physician of that patient. And in cases that they have informed the patient themselves. So this has been put in place in order not to miss by any of the possible parts involved in a case in informing the other. It has worked well so far. So far, there is no being miscommunication. There are not being cases that we have missed in informing or in putting in quarantine or informing the TDH. TDH is aware of all the cases and has conducted the epidemiological investigations necessary had isolated those cases, has sent mandatory quarantine orders that myself has signed as well as uh, the judge has signed, and people have been following those orders. I am glad to inform that between today and yesterday, we have released already four of these people from the mandatory quarantine. They had already been met their two weeks quarantine and they have successfully completed the quarantine and their treatment or their symptoms has totally resolved. So they are now free to move out of their quarantine. However, and people have asked me about that, up to when is somebody infected? The number is eight days. So after somebody has stopped presenting symptoms associated to COVID-19 infection, they are still infectious for eight days. So this is important to explain to the community. If somebody gets sick on day one and is being placed in quarantine until day 15, if they were to have symptoms until day 12, that does not mean that they can go out, on the out of the house on day 15. Why? Because they still have symptoms up to day 12. So they had to be still under quarantine until day 20, okay? So that extra five days, but they are not imposed by anything else other than the common sense. We know that the symptoms have to cease and eight days has to pass before that person stops being infectious. So common sense here will dictate that that person will have to go above the two weeks in quarantine and stay at least for eight days more than what the symptoms were. Other than that, I would like to inform that we are uh, being in conversations with the lab company that is performing what is called the swab test or the RT-PCR, okay? The RT polymerase chain reaction. That's the gold standard for diagnosing COVID-19 infection. This company had been able to acquire a significant number of rapid testing kits, okay, in order to be able to perform now serological antibody markers against COVID-19 infection. That will give us one more tool in the fight to mitigate and prevent the spreading of this disease. The purpose of the serological markers and the what is called the 15-minute rapid test 
in the common lingo, the purpose of this test is to help us in a timely manner to identify those people that are potentially positive cases for COVID-19. In those cases, we do not take that positive answer as a final answer. We need to conduct still the swab testing, which takes 48 to 72 hours. However, that is 48 or 72 hours that we are going ahead and implementing mandatory quarantine on those people, evaluating the close contacts, evaluating possible symptoms in those family members, isolating them from the rest of the family, and conducting all the epidemiological evaluations that we necessarily have to do. So I do believe that this is one more tool that is going to help us to keep going towards where we are going. The low numbers to control the disease, to prevent fatalities, to prevent significant morbidity and mortality. Other than that, I have an email that I could share with you all and I can help you out. It's an email that the testing company had put at disposition of the public in order to be able to get the results. I, uh, it's, it's a casey.edwards at medscanlab.com and I could share this number, I mean, this email address with you all later on so you can put it in your websites and people out of the community, instead of being waiting for the primary care doctor to be calling them and informing about numbers, could directly email these people and if resources are available, they will be able to get it from them. Okay? So the other significant numbers that I'd like to share at this point and the information that I'd like to share, I have just spoken with Dr. Emily Prot from the Texas Department of Health, the June 11. The current numbers for the Valley are as follows. Hidalgo County, 128. Cameron, 108. Willis is seven cases. Webb County, 141. Zapata, 1 and Star County 7. I believe that these are information up to yesterday, but this is the latest official one. They closed the day by 4 o'clock the previous day, so I do not believe that those numbers reflect the numbers that we have from today. But what is very significant is that doing the number of tests that we have been performing, that we are at the top level of any other community here in the Valley, our numbers are staggering low. Okay, we are in the single digits when everybody else is in the three digits. Okay, so we have not have major complications. I'm glad to announce that the patient who was admitted in a, in a Valley hospital for complications related to COVID-19 has successfully completed his hospitalization and was released or discharged home yesterday. He's recovering the other six cases had been uneventful. They have had just mild symptoms and they are recovering well. When we say about what plans were we going to be putting in place to deal against the COVID-19 infection, we always talk about a stepwise planning. Depending on what the situation was at that moment, if we remember, we talked once the first case show up in the state, then in the valley, then in our county, what we were going to do. And I think that we have been always going ahead of the curve. That has been the key for our community to keep such low numbers. That, along with the response by the citizens of this county and the cooperation by those citizens in following the measures that we have imposed. We know that those have been sometimes draconian measures, and they have affected a significant number of our community. However, people need to understand that there is no other way for us to do this. Without all of those measures, without all of those hard decisions, we wouldn't be where we are today. So the only thing that I have to say at this point is that we need to keep going. We will keep moving forward. The steps ahead are going to be hard because there is nothing easier that we are going to be able to do in the future. We have to keep stepping up in our measures if we want to keep the numbers low. I know that 
county authorities, city authorities, and school districts, as well as law enforcement and every other agency that have been part of this, has made their best. And people have really followed the recommendations. We need to keep doing this. The ordinances that we have passed recently, city and county, about imposing the use of facial masks or protecting nose and mouth have been of a significant help to try to prevent the spreading of this disease. We went way before CDC were recommending to do this nationwide. We have been trying always to be a step or two ahead of the process. And the reason why, because if we follow just common sense, we understand why we need to take measures. Talking about the reasons why we have to close the Falcon Dam State Park, or why we are advising people not to celebrate Easter or not to get together with family members or to travel outside the county or the country. It just makes sense. This is a virus that does not know borders, race, religion, sex, or holidays. This is a virus that does not stop one minute of the day. This is a fantastic killer. If we let the virus take an opportunity, we'll definitely kill a lot of people in our country, in our community, and in our cities. We can allow that to happen. So let's keep going. Let's enforce all of the mandatory orders that we have placed I know that as the time goes by, it will become more difficult and people, people will be a little bit more hesitant about doing things because this is not going to be something that is going to end in a week or two. This is something that is going to be with us for the next few weeks or months. And if we want to prevent a further spreading, if we want to prevent a second wave of this disease, we need to keep doing everything that we have been doing up to now. I think that with this, I will conclude my presentation. Thank you for the honor of being here with you. Thank you, Dr. Vasquez. And we'll come back to you with the live portion of the question and answer, and we'll get that shortly. With that, I'll uh, turn it over to Judge Vera. Judge Vera, have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, there are several things that, that have come up and, you know, every day we get different type of questions. However, I will try and, and touch on the ones that have been most asked uh, from me or from my office. Uh, one of them that seems to be asked every every day, several times a day, is from people that are traveling from outside the county or that are going to work and then wanting to come back in, if they're going to have any trouble coming back home. The answer is no. You know, the order, what the order says is that any anyone that is going to go work, let's say we have pipeliners, uh, that's the, probably the most common going to work out in, in West Texas. Certainly, we, we want you to keep working if, if you can. Uh, but when whenever it is that you're coming back into the county, the order states that you must be quarantined for 14 days or as many days as you're going to be here, whichever is less. In other words, if, if you're coming back in uh, for, say, a three-day, four-day weekend and, and then going back to work, then those three or four days that you're here, you must be under quarantine. Once you leave, of course, the, you go back to where you're working. That, that's uh, their issue over there. The other question that's asked is the family. The family that remains behind, do they have to be quarantined for 14 days? The answer is yes, because, see, what we're trying to, to prevent is anyone coming in from the outside and bringing the virus with them and contaminating one of the family members, and then they go out and they pass it on to someone else in our community. And like the doctor just stated, you know, these uh, symptoms usually are not visible for at least, uh, well, between the first day and 14 days. So that's the reason for the 14 days. It's not a magical number that we come up with. Uh, so yes, the family must remain quarantined uh, for the 14 days after their loved one uh, leaves back uh, to work. Uh, the other is people that are coming in from Miguel Aleman, Camargo, somewhere in the surrounding area. Uh, even though we call for people that are international travelers 
to be quarantined. It, it, it's and and we we put out something on our pay, Facebook page today to to address that. People that are coming in from 20 miles, a 20 mile radius around Star County, those you can't come in. Say this morning, go back this afternoon, uh, because we consider that also as being part of the valley. The valley. If you go work in McAllen, Edinburgh, that's all right. The valley is considered Willacy County, Cameron County, Hidalgo, and Zapata County, and of course the neighboring uh, communities on the Mexican side. Uh, you know, we're trying to be as generous as we can, but at the same time, you know, we, we do need to control this virus. So I hope that answers uh, some of the questions for our travelers. The other question that I ask quite a bit is uh, uh, on the citations. What are you doing to enforce these orders? I don't know what the cities, uh, the city PDs are doing or DPS. I do know that they're stopping people uh, and I'm sure they've given citations. But I can tell you what the county has done. Uh, the county has issued uh, 42 citations as of yesterday, uh, numerous warnings, and we have had to arrest four individuals uh, because of uh, breaking the orders. So, you know, we are serious about this thing. The um, One of our local JPs posted on Facebook that he had fined some people $1,000, which is a max. And, and uh, you know, I congratulated him because we need to know, people need to know that this is a serious thing. It is, it is a, a virus that could be life and death threatening. So, you know, it is of utmost importance that, that we all stay at home. The other is this coming weekend, and the doctor uh, alluded to that a little while ago, is the uh, Easter holiday, the state park in, in Falcon. Uh, we've been working on trying to get that park closed because I was not aware that we would get anywhere between three to 6,000 people at the park during La Semana Santa, the Easter break. That is just too many, too many people to have at one place at one time, especially right now. So, uh, unfortunately, the director at Falcon was willing to work with us. However, this is state property and the governor had to issue that order. Uh, I approached Representative Guillen and, and I want to thank him sincerely because he went to bat for us. He did send some letters and I sent some letters to the governor and we were notified yesterday officially that not only was Falcon State Park going to be closed, all state parks in Texas were going to be closed and they would be open whenever I guess he feels that they can be open. Uh, so that now also on the, uh, the Easter holiday, some of the questions that have come up. Can we get together as a family as long as we're not more than 10? The answer is no. You know, if in your household there's four members in your household, you all four can stay together. But that does not mean, you know, you can go and bring your aunt, your uncle, your nephews, your nieces, because then it defeats the purpose. It's if, if, if everyone had gotten together and we're gambling the spreading of the virus. Uh, so I hope that clarifies that. Now, I realize that right now our main concern and our focus is on COVID-19 and it should be because that is life and death. And the one thing we don't want to do, we don't want to lose a single life in our county. So that's the reason we're placing so much emphasis on it. But let me also stress that we are currently in the middle of the census. The census is extremely important to us, to the county also. It's not a life and death situation. But this is where all the monies that are channeled into our communities, the schools, the cities, the, the hospital, you know, everyone, the county, certainly uh, street repairs, the water uh, sewer plants, all this stuff is based on the number of people that live in our community. So it is of utmost important that everyone answer the census. I realize we have bigger fish to fry right now, but the census is also very important. Now, we're at home. You can do it over the phone, you can do it over a laptop, a tablet, whatever, or you can answer it on paper. Um, so I just want to keep to remind people that that also needs to be done in our community. It's important for us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Judge Veda, and that's very well said. We are fighting COVID-19 on one end, but also keeping our eyes on the future as well. And 
in the recovery efforts, the business and economic recovery efforts that are in place. Census, of course, that is a must that we continue to make sure that people are accounted for. And that's imperative that we do as a community and all the efforts that, that we are doing. And the city today, um, in fact, our city commission unanimously passed the extended our um, declaration as well as the order to the 30th and we're adopting the counties and we already have been enforcing both the cities and the county's orders and we will continue to do so. We have issued citations, over 30 some citations, and we're gonna continue, of course, doing the education before citation, educating the public, but at the same time, we are gonna take the measures necessary to make sure that we're enforcing this. Um, I know this uh, Sunday or this weekend, we are gonna be out in full force. We have extra officers patrolling the, the streets this weekend, particularly because of, uh, of this weekend and the celebrations that sometimes occur and the potential risk of spreading the virus. It is imperative that people celebrate at home. I know that the frequently asked question that I've had is about people celebrating in ranches and meeting family members out in the ranch. And as you were mentioning, Judge, the answer is no. I mean, you can celebrate within your household, within your family, but once you leave your household and go visit members uh, of your own family that live elsewhere, that's already in direct violation of the orders. So at this point, it's not to go meet other family members somewhere out about in a secluded ranch. And, and no, that's not the answer. The answer, again, going back to continue to celebrate at home and uh, only going out for essential business and continue to, the, to fight this COVID-19 and, and stopping the spread. Now, as I was mentioning, we have the eye, our eyes on COVID-19, but we also, as city and county business, we also have to operate with that in mind that what are the things that we're also doing to uh, what are our plans? What is our strategic business and economic recovery efforts? And we have a strategic plan for that. We've already been discussing it for the last couple of weeks. We've been uh, uh, forwarding some of this information to businesses. We have been contacting businesses as well. However, I have also with us today, uh, we have Ms. Rose Benavides and our city manager, Albert Perez. And uh, Ms. Rose Benavides is with the Star County Industrial Foundation. And she's gonna come in uh, to visit with us and tell us a little bit more about the efforts that uh, we are implementing for the recovery. And again, going back to business and economic recovery efforts. Are you there with us, Ms. Uh, Rose Benavides? Uh, I, I am. Hi. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, I know that, that we have a lot of issues to cover. We just want to uh, reiterate that we've spent the last few weeks uh, assisting however we can with the uh, with the management and crisis effort but but we also know that as we've been moving forward there's been a very significant um, damage uh, economically to some of our businesses that have been following our orders to uh, to, to close down or, or to reduce their force and and we know that there's excuse for the interruption can you turn on your, yes. your camera Oh, sorry. Yes, I thought it was shared. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Yeah, give me one sec. Okay, there we go. Better? Yes. Yes, yes. okay. So what we've started initially was to ensure that we had um, the ability to get the businesses connected to applications for federal um, economic uh, relief that is from the CARES Act. and. We've attempted um, a very large uh, virtual meeting like this that gave us an opportunity uh, to give them a run. And we've already had quite a number of applicants from our community, but we also know that um, uh, by Friday, there was already 130,000 uh, accounts that had been created for uh, two programs, the Economic Injury Act, which is a $10,000 grant. It's a very fast grant that 
uh, we've uh, we've asked businesses to look into and to apply online because it does not require much detail from them uh, and it does not uh, take a lot of time to do as well. And so uh, we've already been contacted by a number of local businesses that have applied for that. Uh, in addition to that, you've heard a lot about the payroll protection, uh, the paycheck protection uh, uh, program, which basically will allow people to take credit for payroll. Uh, it's, a, it's a process that is going through SBA, but going through local banks. And right now uh, in our community, UVA uh, and, um, and uh, Lone Star National Bank were already doing these applications beginning last week. Uh, IBC has started to do them as well. And as time is going by, uh, they're asking uh, everyone to apply as quickly as possible because there is a cap of 349 billion. And I know that sounds insane, uh, but already they're asking for $250 billion more uh, from Congress because of the amount of response that they've gotten uh, through SBA for these dollars. And uh, unfortunately, as of all things, small businesses kind of sometimes get caught in the middle of a situation where uh, there is a process that uh, requires that sometimes you have a CPA and a bank and, and a couple of other uh, entities assisting you. Uh, we, what we've tried to do is develop some resources, which we're going to continue to share this week, uh, where businesses and get some assistance without having any cost. Small Business Development Council from UTRGV is one of those such agencies. Uh, the women's um, uh, network and, and uh, uh, organization that they have for small businesses is also assisting. And, and there's a, a, an agency that we just became familiar with called SPORS uh, that does this work as well nationally. And so we're gonna be sharing that with all our business owners. We're working in conjunction uh, with the Rear Gun City Economic Development Corporation, with the Roma Economic Development Corporation, uh, and all the partners, because these are resources uh, that every one of our business owners can use. And so what we're trying to do is anticipate uh, potentially another month of, of businesses looking at ensuring that they cover the costs associated with uh, being open by being, if that makes any sense. And I know uh, the counties work real hard along with the cities to find ways to allow these businesses to function, whether it's through deliveries or whether it's through uh, takeout, whether it's through uh, ensuring that they're able to do home services uh, to uh, the much vulnerable and needed population. And so when we're looking at our recovery, uh, uh, our recovery efforts, we know that primarily our recruitment has, uh, has not stopped. And, and I know the mayor will, will allude to some of those efforts here shortly. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about handing and retaining our businesses. And so uh, we want to make certain that as we're moving forward, uh, we're finding ways to keep them in a position where uh, 15 days, 30 days, 60 days from now, they open their doors, we open their doors and they're stronger uh, than ever. And, and a lot of that will be through uh, economic assistance, but a vast majority of that will come from the support of the local community and continuing to shop local. And so going to find ways to incorporate that into all our efforts uh, and beginning this week we'll have a survey that is going to go out to all our businesses uh, where we'll ask about uh, areas that we may be missing uh, in terms of their needs. Uh, I know uh, that while this week is to last two weeks have been going on we've still been having a, a lot of work done on that new development. Uh, the timeline should maintain uh, as it is and so we're expecting that um, our unemployment numbers are, are, are not going to look really good uh, after this month. Uh, we had a, a point, uh, a, a percent, a less than a percentage point of a decrease for the month of February. So I know that when March comes in, we're at about 12% at that point. Uh, that number is going to look very bleak and very similar to what it did when, when we were first uh, beginning those earnest efforts to reduce it. Uh, but I caution everyone that, that those numbers are, are skewed and, and that they're isolated. To, uh, uh, to forces beyond our control. And so when things get back to normal, we know those numbers will level off. Uh, we'll keep up on the sales tax. We measure them from last year to this year. Uh, I know begin the last report we're gonna have is gonna be an excellent report because it, it's gonna detail December of 2019. And, and that is when we have generally the highest sales tax coming into our community. Uh, but as the new quarter comes, uh, we're, we're gonna see a shift in that as well. And so we're, we've always been told, you know, uh, we need jobs for manufacturing, we need jobs that are higher paying. 
and, and we are attempting and looking at all those options, but we know at this point, what our community is gonna need is they're gonna need jobs and they're gonna need jobs as quickly as possible. And, and we know that as we continue to work on this uh, joint effort to, to, to bring more retail and, and bring more uh, 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 commercial projects into our community, uh, it is going to have the opportunity for community members that um, may not have to go back to some of the pipelining jobs for some time or may not have the ability uh, to go into uh, oil and gas and other jobs that they were doing throughout the country uh, is, is have a way for them to, to be able to make a meaningful wage uh, in, in our area. So uh, we're looking forward uh, to ensuring that our, our collaborative efforts are, are going to make an impact and, and we'll be keeping an eye on, on the majority of the applicants that have reached out to us already to ensure that they are not struggling with the application process because time is of the essence. There is no deadline, but there is a cap in funding. And so if applications don't go in the basis, uh, it may not be that they didn't receive it. It may just be that there will be no mon money left. And they're already working on a second portion of it. Uh, we don't know what that's going to look like just yet, but we know that there's going to be a lot more money put into this. Uh, we're hopeful that as we're moving forward, uh, Congress is trying I'm sorry, Congress has been talking again about trying to um, uh, to shift some of those dollars that were slated for border wall construction to potentially go back into um, into how they use that for recovery efforts as well. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that for everyone as well. Thank you, Ms. Benavides. That is crucial that we continue to uh, provide that that recovery and those recovery efforts because the reality is we will recover and certainly that's something that we must continue to to emphasize uh, because at some point as you mentioned 30 days from now 60 days from now at some point we will be coming from this and making sure that we come out strong. with that we also have mr alberto perez our city manager mr perez there is there anything that you would like to add about our recovery effort Good evening, Mayor, uh, Judge Vera, Dr. Vasquez, and Rose. Uh, yes, our um, Rio Grande City Economic Development uh, Corporation has been working on putting information together for small businesses. Uh, this information can be found at rgcedc.com. Again, the information can be found at rgcedc.com. And I'm going to give you uh, several examples of what's out there already. Uh, for example, Small Business Administration. Uh, you can apply now of your small business for economic injury disaster loans. Uh, there's information there. And by the way, we're working on putting some video clips together to further explain in more detail what, uh, the, what they require. This is to assist the small businesses understanding what's being offered and whether they can apply for it or not. Uh, the Comptroller's Office is another example. They're offers, offering assistance to businesses that are struggling for, to pay their taxes that they collected in February. There's information out there already about this. The uh, Department of Agriculture has posted on their website uh, information for the school meals, rural hospitals, and licensing, licensing information. Uh, the workforce solution, for example, has also uh, been proactive in allowing businesses to uh, uh, apply for intervention and layoff aversion support at no cost. All these can be found at the rgcedc.com. Uh, we ask that you check the website uh, on a routine basis so that you can uh, look at the videos we're going to post for you, allowing you to find out more about what's being offered for small businesses. And plus, our staff also will be reaching out to the small businesses to offer assistance with their process to make sure that they uh, get help along the way if they need help. Um, and if they have any questions, feel free to call our office at any time so uh, we can assist you with any of these matters. Thank you, Mr. Perez. And again, just stressing the point that we have multiple resources available already, and we've had them for some time. Please visit our webpage or Facebook. We have multiple resources for businesses, uh, for the community uh, at this point. And it's again addressing, particularly if you've been affected or your business has suffered because of COVID-19. And uh, the same thing with unemployment and, and, and all these other services that are available. Please visit 
our EDC page, Star County Industrial Foundation, of course, Roma's EDC as well, and uh, continue to, to seek out those, those resources that are available in out to the community. As uh, Mr. Perez mentioned, and before we go into the live question and answer, um, just returning back to businesses, I, at this point, I can officially announce that Rio Grande City will be, uh, we will be getting a Starbucks in the near future. And part of this new development, continuing to promote business, we will be having a Hilton Hotel. We will have a Rings and Rings, a expanded Whataburger, a Chick-fil-A, and uh, happy to announce as well, officially a Starbucks here in the Orande City. And we'll continue to, to promote that development and continue to bring other businesses uh, granted. Right now, it's one of the things that we need to continue to emphasize is that this will be conducted right now. I understand it's it's uh, business is being conducted in different ways. For example, here we are. It's instead of having a town hall where people are face to face, we are now having town halls that are virtual. But nonetheless, it's utilizing the technology to still conduct business in an in innovative ways. And that's one thing that the community and the business communities and community in general must realize is how do we go about from this experience to innovate and be creative with new ways of conducting business, new ways of addressing the needs of our communities and all at the same time continue to enforce the orders and continue to comply with the orders and, and be creative. And of course, we are here as well, Judge Vera, Judge, uh, Dr. Vasquez, is if people have suggestions, if people have recommendations, we are listening to you. We are listening to people's advice, recommendations, and we get all this information, compile it, and then come to a consensus based on all the information that's being presented to us by multiple entities, whether it's law enforcement, educational community, business communities, as well as, as uh, regular Joe, myself as a regular Joe, my uh, families, uh, you name it, friends, uh, community members, uh, everyone, we're listening, we're all ears, our commissioners for the city and the county and the medical communities, they're listening to, everyone is listening for these ideas and better ways of continue to fight COVID-19, but at the same time, have a, a foresight, a forward thinking of, how are we gonna keep moving our, our city and our county forward through this pandemic and going back to the idea that there is light at the end of the tunnel and no, it is not a train. It is a, a light that will continue to shine and move forward. So with that, at this time, we have multiple news agencies that are following our live feed. We have, and in this order, which the way I'm gonna ask the, uh, news entities to ask questions is by the way they signed up. What we did is we sent out a, an invite to all news entities and pretty much whoever signed up first is uh, the individuals that we're gonna, they'll have the first questions. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna call on uh, different entities. And at that point, if you have a question, please ask your question. And then one question at a time, that way all the news entities have the opportunity to, to ask a question. So what I'll do is I'll ask you to introduce yourself and who you represent. So we'll start. We have, by the way, with us, we have La Estrella, we have La Pistolera, we have Channel 23 and Channel 4, we have Univision, we have Channel 5, Telemundo, and The Monitor at this time that have a live feed with our virtual town hall meeting. So let's start with La Estrella. If you can hear us here, um, Mr. Andy Hernandez, are there any specific questions to Dr. Vasquez, to the judge, or to myself about anything that we have discussed or anything or any other questions about any city or, or county business that maybe we have not touched up yet or we have alluded to? Mr. Hernandez, yes. can you hear me? Well, yes, buenas, buenas tardes, Mayor Villarreal. How are you, sir? Doing well, Mr. Hernandez. Once again, like always, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you guys doing what you're doing. The parte de la estrella 95.1 FM. Thank you, Dr. Vasquez. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Judge, for everything y'all are doing. Like Dr. Vasquez says, 
Gracias a Dios, Star County is ahead of the game, and we thank you guys for that. So just a couple of questions. I'm not going to say too many because I know we have several entities that are, are, are participating. So, Dr. Vasquez, a question for you. As per one of our, our listeners asked, you stated that the COVID-19 cannot survive in temperatures of 85 degrees and higher, correct? Okay, thank you. The, the, invest, the, the research that we have up to now and information that we have with the, this virus is that this virus does not survive high temperatures. So temperatures above 85 are consistent with non-viability for this virus. Oh, so the question I guess from the listener is, because like now we're already receiving those days, I think today we were at about 105, e in the valley. Does that affect, does that help in any way or anything? Or that does it matter? The answer is we don't know. We are talking about how long does the virus live outside the human body over surfaces. And we know that they do not last a lot of time for more than 85 degrees. However, that doesn't have anything to do with how the, the virus live inside the human body. Okay, muchas gracias. Another question for you that we got from another listener. Uh, rumor states, Dr. Vasquez, that Laredo Webb County was also doing this new uh, rapid testing that we're going to start doing here in Clark County. Apparently, they're saying that they're going and doing away with that. Is that true? Is there a reason why it is? Laredo had an initiative to start performing rapid testing. However, the company that they contracted to perform those tests did not show a good reliability on the results of the test. So Laredo bought a number of test kits, and when they did their validation studies, they did find that it was not as promised as the company. So they sent back those test kits, and they did not perform these activities. However, I don't think that this is going to preclude Laredo or any other place in the future to be conducting this test. I will explain later on. I am sure questions are going to come about this. What is the importance of performing this serological testing in the future? Brilliant. Thank you, Dr. Vasquez. And uh, one thing for mayor and judge, just a quick other question. Well, hold on, Mr. Mr. Hernandez, let's continue with the, so we'll come back to you. Yes, I'm going to continue with La Pistolera at this point. Go ahead and ask two questions. We'll do two questions at a time. So La Pistolera, can you hear us? And what are your two questions? Um, judge, this question is for you. Um, I know that at the beginning of uh, when we set up the, the tent over at SMP, we know that this particular tent was four or five people there. Uh, at the you point real bad the echo, fire, who will be picking up the tap? Judge Veda, we can't hear you. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to mute. Uh, all right. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear your question, uh, Clarissa. Could you repeat, repeat it, please? Uh, yes, sir. Um, at, at, at the beginning, when we first set up that tent over at STC, um, Mr. Sam Vale was very gracious to pay for the first month of the rental of the tent. Now that we're coming up, up on that time frame, um, who will continue to pay for, for that installation so that the test can continue to be ongoing? Yeah. Uh, Clarissa, I have committed the county to another month, uh, and we'll see how that month goes. If our numbers continue to decline as far as people that are being tested, then, of course, we'll, we might make the decision that, that we need to close it down. But as long as it's needed, we're going to have it open. You know, I'm not going to lose a life for $20,000. Very well. Thank you. Um, that is the question that we have so far. We'll um... you have a second one, Ms. Uh, Gonzalez. We're going with two questions at a time. Okay. Um, my my next question um, would be for for you, Mayor. Um, as far as the the people that are, are 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 police officers, we understand that that they are it's officers' um, discretion whether or not they uh, arrest a, a a person. Uh, what at what point um, do you decide? Okay. Uh, this this person this officer has been too discreet per se, uh, and 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 more people need to be held accountable for being out past that curfew. Thank you for bringing it up. And, and yes, it is something that we're moving on because, and this is something that I since the beginning said: education before citation. At this point, we need to educate the public. But if you notice, 
we have already over 30 citations as well as arrests. So we are moving in that direction. However, there is, yes, there's a discretion. And that is something that our chief of police is continually visiting with the officers to make sure one and first and foremost, there are many people that education will do. And then there are a few and those, those individuals that continually, you see them out there, let's say multiple times, those, the officers are well aware of who's out there for what reasons, especially those individuals that have really no business of being out there. So yes, there's some discretion involved, but at the same time is continue having conversations because the chief has meetings on a weekly basis to talk about those issues. What are they seeing? What is going on? Are people still complying? And by, by and large, yes, they are. However, we are taking, we have taken the steps to do citations, even though our first response was education before citation, but we're already beyond that. Now, yes, we are taking extraordinary measures during these circumstances and people will get arrested if they do not comply with the orders. However, we still are educating our officers on a continual basis to, that, that is not the first, the, the first option. You know, if, if there's education and can suffice and settle the matter, then use that first. However, like anything else, there's a level of escalation. And if it continues to escalate, then of course the more serious measures will be applied. But it is critical that we have those, those weekly meetings to address some of these issues, and they are. They're making sure that they do meet uh, often so they can discuss these matters. But thank you for, for that question. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Moving on, we have channel 23 and channel four with us. Do you have any specific questions, a representative from channel 23 or chan and channel four? Can anyone hear us? No? Okay, moving on, we also have Univision. Yeah. Do we have someone from Univision? Hello, sí, aquí estoy. Buenas Dalia tardes. Ramírez. Buenas tardes. Um, sí, sí. Preguntas, Luisa. Uh, usted representa Univision, so por favor. ¿Qué son las preguntas que tiene para el doctor, para el juez o para, uh, para mí o el Villarreal? Uh, básicamente, me gustaría que el mensaje principal lo pudiéramos tener en español para nuestra audiencia, porque todo el mensaje lo tuvimos en inglés. Y right. básicamente sabemos que estamos en una temporada que es una Semana Santa diferente a las anteriores. ¿Cuál sería la recomendación precisamente por motivo de la Semana Santa? Escuchamos que van a estar reforzando la, la seguridad en la, en la comunidad con más oficiales con el propósito de evitar una mayor propagación de contagios. Creo que esta pregunta podría ser dirigida al juez y, okay. y la siguiente pregunta, ahorita, ahorita la, la cuestión. Ok, empecemos con el okay. juez. Sí, el, uh, muchas gracias por la, por la pregunta, Ms. Ramírez. Mira, el... Uh, la Semana Santa que ya, ya empezó, ya estamos en ella, eh, siempre ha sido algo de, de mucho eh, mortificación para uno, especialmente en el Parque Estatal de Falcón, porque ahí por lo regular se, se juntan de 3.000 a 6.000 personas, que eh, pues eso no, no se puede tener ahorita. So, gracias a Dios el gobernador uh, mandó cerrar todos los parques estatales en el, en el estado de Texas. El, el, el domingo sí va a andar el, los diputados del condado, los policías de la ciudad, el DPS del estado, todos van a andar trabajando para enforzar el stay at home o que se queden en la casa, porque no queremos que, que en estos tiempos, porque sabemos que nuestra gente está impuesta a salir con sus familias, a juntarse con sus familias, pero este año no se puede se tienen que quedar nomás con la gente que estén en su casa. Por ejemplo, si, si en una casa vive una familia de papá y mamá y dos hijos, no, nada más esos cuatro pueden estar. No pueden venir los hermanos, los tíos, los sobrinos, porque si no, pues vamos a, 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 a quebrar la orden de, de stay at home. Se necesitan quedar en la casa. 
si andan en la calle los van a parar y les van a preguntar que por qué andan, si es algo de necesidad. Si es una necesidad que alguien se enfermó o algo así, bueno, van a tener que explicar y probar que es la necesidad. Si no, les pidamos por favor que se queden en la casa. Y la siguiente pregunta, no sé quién me la pueda contestar de ustedes, pero también estaban conversando sobre los, el viajar, el, el, la prohibición en los viajes, incluyendo también incluso ir a México. Esto, esto, ¿cómo se estaría manejando? También las personas que comúnmente cruzan del otro lado de la frontera e ingresan por tierra por los puertos de entrada que corresponde al condado de Estar, esto también se limitaría una cuarentena o se estaría verificando esto, aunque sean residentes o ciudadanos? Bueno, eh, déjame contestar esa también. Mire, el, uh, el, el, stay, el stay at home uh, es para si alguien o de los, via los que viaje, si alguien entra al condado que venga del Valle, y el Valle lo definamos como el, el condado de Cameron, Willacy, Hidalgo, Zapata y Natural Nosotros. Si alguien viene de esos condados o nosotros vamos a esos condados, no hay ningún problema. Pueden ir y venir a trabajar. Sabemos que mucha gente de aquí va a trabajar a Edimburgo, a McAllen, a Huesca, donde sea. Lo mismo es la gente que vive a 20 millas alrededor del condado de Star. O sea, Miguel Alemán, Los Guerras, Mier, Camargo. Esas áreas pueden ir y venir. Sin, sin cuarentena, sin, sin mucha mortificación. Natural, necesitan usar sus máscaras, necesitan seguir todas las, las órdenes que estén en, en, en lugar, pero pueden ir y venir. Gente que venga, vamos a suponer que alguien viene de Saltillo o vienen de Guadalajara o algo así, al pasar tienen que quedarse en cuarentena por 14 días, no pueden salir de donde vayan a ir a visitar. Por eso muchos que dicen, voy para un funeral, les decimos no vengan porque no van a poder ir al funeral. Tienen que quedarse en cuarentena. Eh, lo que estamos tratando de prevenir es que alguien venga de afuera de la área y que traiga el virus de esto y no lo, no lo desparramen aquí en, en nuestra comunidad. Uh, es lo que estamos tratando de prevenir. No queremos castigar a nadie ni nada de eso, pero en este tiempo está muy delicado el viajar a otros lugares donde pueda traer el virus o nosotros llevarlo. So, por eso es la razón de eso. Estamos hablando entonces únicamente de 20 millas a la redonda del condado de Star. Así es. Ok. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Next, we have Channel 5. Do we have it? Channel 5. Yes, thank you very much. It's Christian Colón. Thank you very much for having us today. I have two questions. And so if Dr. Vasquez could clarify a little bit about the, people that were, the four people that were released or at least uh, are done with their time. I guess my question would be, what happens with these people that are positive and that have you know, been in quarantine so far? What's the plan the city, has, the county has moving forward for that one day? Not Kimberly here. Your mic. Okay. We couldn't hear the question. Can you answer? Can you ask me again, please? Yes. Yeah, if you could clarify a little bit about the numbers in terms of four people were either released or four people were or had finished with their time. Uh, what, what kind of process the county has for those people who are who did test positive, we know that already. Uh, what's their outcome? Yeah, once once again, the numbers, the number that we have for Star County were seven positive cases. Of those, four of them had already completed the two weeks mandatory quarantine. They have been already released out of quarantine. Out of the seven cases, we have just one that became ill enough to require hospital admission. That patient was discharged from a valley hospital the day before yesterday. We are happy to announce that he is at home recovering. So we do have right now just three current patients that are under mandatory quarantine and they are about in the last few days of their quarantine. Once they reach the 14 days, TDH has been evaluating them on a daily basis. They have been following and monitoring symptoms. If they were to be asymptomatic for that eight days period that we have mentioned before, 
they will be released back to the community. But I want to, to take the opportunity with your question and trying to tie it up to the previous one we have. The seven cases that we have had in Star County have been all of them travel related. So this is important. Our community has not yet to have the first case of community spread disease. It's important for us to keep enforcing the travel restrictions we have imposed. The mandatory quarantine to people who are coming outside the valley is a very important tool we have in place to try to, try to prevent further increase in our number of cases. Thank you very much. And then my second question is, we've heard a lot what Star County has done on a local level. Do you guys feel that, I guess this question goes for all of you, do you guys feel that the state has done enough and the, the federal government has done enough to help uh, communities like Star County? We have taken the, can you hear it, Judge? From uh, the yes, you, we have taken measures um, and in fact, when this first study started, I, uh, in having conversations and having collaborative efforts with our, our um, medical authority, with Judge Vera, with all the municipalities, including the businesses and the educational entities. And uh, at that point, we, by having those conversations, we decided to take uh, a first step approach where we're going to end up doing some of this. We were not at that point dependent on what others were doing. We kind of said, you know what, this is, these are some, some measures that we need to take in place and we need to implement to make sure that we minimize the, the uh, spread of this uh, COVID-19. And from there, uh, we moved it beyond that, of course, is seeking the additional resources through the state and, and federal. But by and large, yes, we have kept current with all the information uh, with local, state, and federal authorities. But with that emphasis in mind, what applies to us here in Rio Grande City, La Grulla, Escobares, Roma, Star County as a whole? And with that in mind, we then, of course, expanded it beyond that. What affects Hidalgo affects Star? What affects Zapata County affects Star? What affects Camargo affects uh, Star County. So all this, all these measures have been in place. And as we continue to, to operate from that prime directive of making sure that people, um, bottom line is, is minimizing that spread and making sure that our community is safe and uh, well taken care of. So with that, again, we are, we have by and large taking the local approach and then expanding outwards and judge your point on that uh okay if i understood the question correctly you asked if if we felt that the feds and the state have done enough is that the question correct yeah. okay uh i i think they have you know and again this is something that is is new to all of us uh you know something that no one had ever experienced uh, if, if there's one thing that, that I find at fault was maybe the federal government not imposing a stay at home nationwide from the very beginning. Uh, I think that that would have helped a lot. But uh, again, Monday morning quarterbacking is very easy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, sir. And I agree with the judge to, uh, to some degree. The reality is what affects our neighboring communities affects us. What affects, for example, the state of Texas are, are the bordering states as well. And at the end, when you're looking at a country as a whole, we need to make sure that we have a standard, uh, a federal standard that we're all doing our part. When you have, you know, 30 states doing one thing and let's say 10 or not, then that impact of those states will affect the, the other states that are complying or they're making the efforts to make sure that they stop the spread. So we got to look at it from a microcosm. And that's why here, whatever happens in Stark County is going to affect the rest of all of Rio Grande Valley. So what happens in Hidalgo happen, affects Star. What happens in Zapata affects us too. And if you expand that same concept, it is clear what affects the state of Texas affects other states and vice versa. So I, I mean, at this point, yes, I agree with the judge that 
we have to look at this from a uh, from a from a nationwide effort to address this. And I really believe that as as a country as a whole, that uh, states would be implementing many of these measures the same as uh, bordering states around them, because if one state is not, then it will impact the, the rest, particularly the ones bordering those particular states. Again, so that's, as the judge mentioned, it's the two cents worth there, but Telemundo, are there any questions for representative from Telemundo? Alguien de Telemundo? No. Can you hear us? No. Okay. Then moving on to, to the monitor. No, we have the monitor with us. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, yes, so I guess this question would probably be for Dr. Vasquez. I was wondering um, how many of the rapid testing uh, or rapid tests would be available and when do you uh, foresee that that will uh, start uh, will begin operating i guess yes we have we have talked berenice and, and good, thank you for your question we have talked about uh, starting with 500 test kits and we should have them as soon as monday here in our county however before we start serving the public i am want to i want to make sure that these tests are as reliable as they claim to be so in our plans are to perform a validation study over 10 different tests where we are going to get five known cases of positive coronavirus infection within our community or the Hidalgo community. And we are going to test those five. And we are going to test five non-positive, meaning a negative cases for coronavirus infection through the RT-PCR. The purpose of this is confirming that the true positive and the true negative rates that they claim to be is actually true. We do not want to fall into the problem that Laredo had early on this week and then to have to cancel orders. So what we are going to do in advance before we start testing anybody in the community, we will perform these validation studies on our own, making sure that what is being promised is actually what is going to happen in our community. Okay. Uh, thank you. question. Sure, yeah. Um, I guess this one would be for Judge Vera. I was wondering, so um, I know that you said the county is now committed to funding the facility for another month or so. Uh, how much is it costing the county and how is the county able to afford it or what is sort of the the funding decisions you're having to make in order to, to, fund, for, to fund this? You're your microphone. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to turn it on. Uh, we, Technology. <laughs> we're losing you, Judge. <laughs> it's too new for me. Uh, we have a uh, a memo of understanding uh, with, uh, that is being processed with the. Uh, Judge uh, Cortez, Richard Cortez. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, anyhow, uh, because we are testing Pidalgo in the uh, in course, because, so whatever they they incur from us, uh, we will pay them, and whatever we test from them, uh, they would pay us. Uh, of course, the understanding is if the feds, which they have promised to reimburse us for all this money, if they do, of course, we're not going to bill our neighbors. Um, now, where are we paying for this? Thank God we have a rainy day fund in the county, and if anything meets a rainy day, this does. So uh, that's where that money's coming from. And also the, the cost for the facility, the, the drive-through the, is, uh, is about 20000 That does not include the testing lab. The, the uh, testing lab, they, I just got a bill submitted, uh, I believe it was Monday, uh, for about 20000 for the first uh, couple of weeks. So that's in the process of getting paid. So, uh, you know, again, thank God we, we were financially stable enough to, to be able to absorb some of this cost. Also, also, let me add, the hospital is also working with us. Even though we're paying, 
but the hospital has committed that they would help us. Uh, if, if the feds don't come through, the hospital will, will help us. Let's uh, come back around with uh, La Estrella. Mr. Hernandez, do you have any other questions from your from your audience? Yes, Mayor, this is going for you and Judge Vera. Just one last question before we let y'all go. I know that we the, the priority here is to contain the spread, stay home and all so forth. But I know we've been having an issue that's been coming out all over social media and the news of people throwing masks and gloves all over the place, all over public areas. I know we're doing education reports, education for people not following the, the laws of staying home, but what are you enforcing for those people? If you're caught throwing your gloves or your mask or anything around public areas, what, what kind of uh, problem do you do that people are looking at getting into? Well, that is called littering. And uh, however, however, going back to uh, the education, and that's something uh, you must have read my mind because we're actually coming up with some uh, some PSAs on how to help people or how to educate people on how to dispose of gloves, for example, of masks, and how to do it in a manner that that is safe and secure. So uh, whether it's how you pinch and take them off, and of course do instructional, and uh, that's something that's coming up that we're planning to do in the next few days. And it's gonna be a campaign, it's promoting campaigns with people and educating individuals on how to do it properly and reiterate that point to dispose of it. It's, uh, I know we're talking about, is that, do we consider that hazardous material and to some degree, depending on where it's at? But nonetheless, those are efforts as a campaign that all of us can continue to promote, whether it's through social media, whether it's ourselves out in the community or through other campaign efforts. But I'm glad you touched up on that because that's, I have seen it. Uh, I've seen gloves out and about, I've seen masks and those, those again, expressing to the community that it's imperative that they dispose of it properly. But thank you for bringing that judge. Do you have anything else to add to that? No, it's a, uh, you're right on Mary. You know, and that's exactly my, my view. You know, it is littering. And whatever the fines are for littering, I'm sure could be imposed. I don't know if we could add, I don't know the legality of hazardous waste being disposed of. But, um, you know, again, it, it does take its gating. And, and uh, I think our people have responded uh, certainly very, very well. And, and once they're educated that just leaving them in the parking lot is dangerous, they, they will stop. Yes, sir. Well, thank you guys for your time. The part of the Estrella 95.1 FM. Thank you guys. I appreciate your time. God bless you all. Thank, thank you, Andy. Mr. Hernandez. Thank you, Andy. Have la pistolera. Ms. Gonzalez. I don't, I don't have questions per se, but I do have several positive comments from our viewers and our listeners. And and, and this is in, in appreciation for everything that you guys have been doing. Uh, the judge, doctor, a mayor, the mayor of Roma, Mayor Escobares, all, all of you uh, uh, as, as a whole have come together. And uh, Henry Alcocer says, we should all stay on course. We will have plenty of time to get together with family. I think this community is doing a great job on the way we are taking good advice. And next, Sel so Gonzalez says, I am beyond proud of Stark County, how they've been handling the situation, and it shows on the number of cases we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'm Thank glad you. that those uh, comments are very positive because uh, we have together as a community to uh, bring about efforts designed to, to minimize the spread. And although some of these efforts have been tough to, to manage, uh, just the idea of not being able to step outside you know, comfortably without wondering, hey, should I uh, be concerned about getting infected and just being at home, that stay at home shelter, shelter in place. I know it is difficult and it has been stressed uh, to me and to others about the anxiety that comes with it, the fear, the uncertainty, just being at home. And that's another thing, by the way, I'm glad it was brought up. Uh, it's about mental health as well. What are the that we can do 
as we deal with the COVID-19, not just with the medical side of it, but with the mental health side of having to be at home. Or, but again, it's how we look at this. Being at home is being safe, but at the same time, there are other things that we can do at home that can help us, uh, whether it's get closer to our family members, taking other measures at home, exercising at home, uh, having routines for the children in place, whether it's setting up something that's going to help them maintain a routine that's effective for children, particularly. Uh, and for those of you that do not know, yes, I'm the mayor of Rio Grande City, but I'm also a licensed professional counselor and deal, have been dealing with mental health uh, services for over 20 some years. So coming from that background, it is imperative that we also address the mental health side of uh, dealing with COVID-19 and taking those measures to ensure that we are at home, but also taking the initiative to feel well at home by, again, going back to setting up a, a routine for our children, ourselves. Do we have time for ourselves to, to uh, recharge our batteries, to uh, be able to connect, uh, read a book, uh, watch something? Maybe you have an idea. Maybe this is the time to write a book. If you've had that in place that you've always wanted to write a book, well, this is the perfect opportunity to do so. I know Dr. Vasquez is going to be writing a book about all this because he's been our lead. And if he hasn't already, he's, he's sure on his way to writing it. I'm sure Judge Veda the same. And uh, yourselves out there, what are the things that you haven't done in the past that maybe this is the opportunity to do right now that you have the time at home and uh, I'll be talking more about this, that or those type of mental or the mental health side of COVID-19 at a future town hall or, or future um, PSA. But again, let's keep all that in mind that uh, this effort is something that we all are dealing with. And uh, thank you to our community for, and we see it, we've seen it, all of us have seen this, our community by and large has, has taken this uh, seriously and they are staying at home and they are following the orders and they are taking measures necessary to safeguard the family and health and well-being of, of their families. So continuing with, uh, we have channel 23, channel 4, I believe they were not in line. We had going back to wrap around with Univision. Are there any questions? Tiene preguntas Univision o cualquier otro comentario? No? Okay, Good. wrapping around to channel. Okay, Univision. Sí. Están en la aquí. Línea? sí, aquí estoy en, en la línea. Nada más este, me gustaría que reforzáramos un poquito más acerca de, de las recomendaciones para la comunidad durante este periodo. Nada más. Okay, las recomendaciones este, que van a pasar la orden, eh, renovar la orden, extender la orden de la ciudad en combinación con la del condado. Este, y en esta orden, si es, si es mandatario, mandatario, no, mandatario, ahí por favor me, me perdona con el español, a veces no lo practico. <risa> Gracias. Pero hay que su compasión y este, paciencia. Este, pero la orden uh, es muy importante de mantener, por ejemplo, gobierno, gobierno, ¿cómo se dice? Este... Cover our, our nose and mouth. Este, y es importante porque es para minimizar la propagación de, de esta enfermedad. Este, y también para estas medidas de quedarnos en nuestras casitas. Es importante, si no es necesario de salir, si no es algo esencial de quedarnos en nuestras casas, eso es muy importante porque eso realmente es una de las mejores soluciones de esto, ¿verdad? Para minimizar ese la propagación del COVID-19 uh, y también de no ir a visitar familiares tampoco. Yo sé que es difícil, ¿verdad? Que, porque la gente queremos ir a visitar a nuestras familiares que viven eh, mías afuera o en otras ciudades, pero en este momento les exigimos que no lo hagan porque es, es para el beneficio de toda la comunidad. Entendemos que es difícil, entendemos que es algo que nos... Este, esta situación que nunca en nuestras vidas hemos, nos hemos sentido así como 
esta incertidumbre, esta ansiedad, este miedo de todo lo que está sucediendo alrededor y todas estas medidas que estamos tomando, ¿verdad? Que nos dicen que no, pues no puedes salir y no puedes andar allá y te tienes que cubrir. Yo sé que todo esto es difícil, pero al fin de cuentas todo esto es necesario para, que la, para el beneficio de nuestra comunidad. Y va a llegar un momento, va a llegar un día que sí vamos a salir de esto, vamos a salir, sí lo podemos hacer, lo vamos a hacer, este, pero tomando todas estas medidas, estas recomendaciones del doctor Vázquez, de las de los autoridades este, que nos dicen, hey, este es el plan, esto es estratégico, todo lo que hemos hecho es una estrategia, no nada más es de, ok, vamos a hacer esto, no, está establecido en, en medicina, en, en research, está establecido en información de, la, de las comunidades médicas, por el médico, los médicos, ¿verdad? Este, so, todo esto es una estrategia este, para minimizar este, este, la propagación del COVID-19. So, sí les exigimos que nos ayuden, este, porque es la realidad. Todas las personas podemos hacer esto, pero mientras y cuando que todos hagamos de nuestra parte, todos nosotros, porque el fulano de tal no lo hace, pues hey, nos va a afectar a todos. Es importante que toda la comunidad siga estos, estas órdenes porque nos beneficia a todos, al condado de Star, al condado de Hidalgo, a todo el Valle del Río Grande, este, a todos nosotros del estado de Texas nos beneficia cuando todos hacemos de nuestra parte. ¿Cualquier otra pregunta? Y no sé si la contesté, pero bueno. Gracias, encantada, gracias. Yo creo Yo que lo que necesitamos. Muchísimas gracias. A usted. Wrapping around to channel five. We are good, thank you. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Please do not, thank you. Okay, thank you. How about uh, the monitor? I have any no more questions, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. At this time, do you have any other questions on your account, uh, uh, Dr. Vasquez or Judge Vera? Any other questions that have come up to your personal account or anything that you would like to add? Yes, Major. I would like to, to take an opportunity to, to talk about what is next, okay? You both, George and, and Major, you have, lead, you have been leaders in this effort, and, and you know that all along we have been trying to step ahead of the game and be two steps in front of everybody. So I believe that this is the time already to go two steps ahead of the game. So the question is, what is next? How do we get out of this problem and how do we continue life as we knew? Okay. So I believe the key word for this future after the COVID-19 infection is going to be immunoglobulins. The future is going to be who has been already exposed to this disease and has developed resistance and is immune to the disease. And why am I saying this? Because when everything is said and done, once this first wave passes, and we are talking about maybe four to six to eight weeks, okay? Once the number of cases peak and start going down, we will still have to face the reality that a significant large amount of the population will have never been exposed to this virus. And why is that? The reason of that is because our mitigation effort has been so good and so great that we have kept a large amount of the populations at home and have not been exposed to, be, to the virus. So what is next for us as a community and how do we move forward? We will have to perform massive amount of testing with these rapid test kits trying to determine if the person has been affected and has already overcome and developed immunity to this disease. And why is the importance? The importance is because those will be people that will be able to go back to the workforce, will be able to go back to their normal activities a lot sooner that people have not been exposed. So meantime, we do not have a good vaccine to provide immunity And as long as we do not have an effective treatment to take care of this disease, the only way that we have 
in order to protect that big number of people that will not be exposed to this disease and the first wave is going to be to prevent their exposure further down. So how do we do that? Letting people who has already been infected and have developed immunity being the first ones to go back to work. So what are we talking about? We are talking about law enforcement. We are talking about healthcare worker. We are talking about the students. We are talking about public and private entities. So massive testing in the communities are going to be key in order to pass the patient to move on. So now we are going to start doing this. The reasons why we are doing this now is a little bit different. Now we are trying to identify in a soon manner patients that potentially has been exposed and are sick. However, in the near future, we need to start turning up the page and start testing significant, massive amount of people in our community just to make sure that those people have been exposed and have recovered to the disease. I think that that's the next step to follow if we want to keep ahead and keep progressing and move towards the future. Thank you, Dr. Vasquez. Judge, as we wrap this uh, virtual town hall meeting, do any closing remarks? Uh, yes, Mayor. Again, I want to thank you and your staff for, for putting this uh, meeting together. I think it's been very, very helpful. Uh, I also want to um, to thank all the people. I mean, there's, there's so many people that need to be thanked for what we've done so far. But very specially, you know, I'd like to thank the commissioners and the commissioner's court for pretty much allowing me to do whatever, you know, needs to be done. Uh, so I, I thank them for the trust that they have placed in me. Uh, I want to thank the cities, the four cities in, in our county that uh, you, Mayor, and, and the other mayors and, and the commissioners have, have been, I mean, just wonderful. Uh, the schools, you know, the schools have worked with us extremely well. Uh, the hospital, the... Uh, first responders, I mean, first responders have been working out there day in, day out behind the scenes and probably never get thanked. Uh, you know, certainly law enforcement, firefighters, you know, everyone else that's out there working. Uh, we sincerely thank you. And uh, and also all the emergency management coordinators in, in the county. I know all the cities have them. We have them. Uh, they also have been out there tirelessly working, looking for equipment and so forth. You know, these are the people that are actually doing the work. We're just the face, but they're the ones that are doing the work. And and I just want to thank you all, and and of course the citizens that have worked with us tirelessly. And and like you mentioned a little while ago, I, I realized that some of our businesses are taking a great hit, uh, both financially and, and and emotionally and other ways. Uh, but we will be back, as the mayor said, we will be back, and hopefully we'll be back stronger. I'm, I'm very certain that we will be back stronger porque, como dice el dicho, si no, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger, and this will make us stronger. Thank you, Judge. And to reiterate that point, there have been multiple entities that have put us in this position that we have taken all these steps and many individuals to thank. So glad that, that you mentioned some of those. Of course, all the city commissions in our, in our county and um, I also want to take the opportunity to thank all first responders, all the individuals that are in the front lines that uh, are out there day in, day out, fighting this COVID-19 in the front lines, as well as the people that are keeping us uh, alive, the, all these essential workers and businesses. And from here at, at HEB, the, the individuals that are working there day in, day out, to uh, help us during this time. And again, the first responders, the educators that are working from home to kind of maintain that education for our children and the nurses and doctors, as we were mentioning, EMS, firefighters, police officers. There's so many individuals to thank. And uh, it is clear that as a community, uh, people by and large have gone out to help one another. In fact, uh, just to mention, we we received disinfectant from uh, Val Verde County. And of course, we distributed some of this dis disinfectant 
to uh, the county, for example, to other entities within other municipalities and entities that have asked us for some of this. Uh, we've received uh, masks from uh, churches, for example, from business community, from other business entities. And people during this time have come out to, uh, to, to give a, a, a helping hand. And that is something to applaud for. That is something to say, you know what, thank you to the community. And even though they don't want the recognition uh, because many of these individuals that provide these, uh, donate some of these items to us do not want to be named, but it's important to just say that there are wonderful individuals that are coming out to assist others in this time of need. And I'm so glad that it's happening and we are witnessing this uh, on a daily basis. So not just hearing the bad news, the bad news is out there, but there is also so much wonderful news of how we're coming together, how people are giving back, how people are donating and many examples of the collaboration between entities, between the county, the cities, the schools, the uh, all these other taxing entities as well and collaborative efforts between law enforcement community, for example, as well. I mean, just so much collaboration happening right now that it's something that we all can be proud of as a community, as a county, as a city, and uh, as a Rio Grande Valley and, and certainly as a state and, and really as a nation. So these are all efforts that we're doing our end and we're asked everyone to continue to do their end. So with that being said, I thank everyone for being part of this historic virtual town hall meeting uh, and going back to using, utilizing technology to still find a way to conduct business. And that is the new normal right now. That is our new normal. And I, I ask the community the business community to find also these innovative ways to conduct business during this time as well and the community in general. So with that, thank you so much for being here, for joining us today. Dr. Vasquez, thank you, sir, for, for leading the way and for being a, a strong advocate for our county, for our community when it comes to, to all related to all these medical services and, and your knowledge and expertise have certainly put us in a prime position of strength. Judge Vera, thank you, sir, for your leadership as a judge, as, as uh, bringing uh, the, uh, our cities together in, in this fight. Thank you, gentlemen, for, for your efforts. And, and thank you to our city commission. And thank you to all the residents of Rio Grande City and Star County. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any other questions that we didn't answer today, Please forward those questions to our website or through our Facebook, and we will get back and answer some of those questions that you might still have. I know there's still a lot of information out there and questions. Please forward those questions to us or call us at 487-0672. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Major. Thank you.